The chair calls Sheila Page, representing herself, and she's for the bill. Ms. Page, are you here? Uh, my name is Sheila Page. I want to testify on behalf of myself in favor of House Bill 60. I wanted to testify and talk about um, fetal pain. Um, but first, I just wanted to tell you that um, just after listening to all the testimony, it saddens me to see all the beautiful young women here um, with hope and promise. Um, they all have futures that they're planning and um, they're all individuals and they have beautiful hair and tattoos and nails and shoes and not one of them can say that they look forward to the experience of being a mother. Not one of them can testify to the joy um, and just the, probably one of the most profoundly rewarding experiences you could ever have is being a mother and, and that's really sad and I don't blame those women, I blame perhaps the people who told them that lie, that being a mother is something to fear and dread. Um, and um, you've heard some of the facts about fetal pain. I know there's a lot of research, and um, if you don't have that research, I know you'll get it. And I really don't want to talk about all the facts of the research because I think that it dehumanizes the situation when you um, speak about the science of pain. Um, I think it's reprehensible, really, that we even have to talk about uh, fetal pain because I wonder what we plan to do to those children that we have to even think about whether or not they will have pain. And um, I see people in pain all the time. I'm a DO. And um, when we speak of pain, we don't really talk about synapses and pathways. Um, I treat people who have had pain for many years, and I can tell you that one man's discomfort is another man's agony. I can also say that when we talk about pain, I cannot know the depth of pain that any of you might feel at the loss of a loved one. And this is a very human experience, and it does not have as much to do with the synapses and pathways that we talk about when we talk of the science of pain, it's a psychological experience too. Um, I can assure you that if you walk into my office asking for help with your pain, I will not ask you to provide scientific proof that you have had pain first. I will help you. Um, and so I really would like for you to consider the humanity of this issue. We are not talking about anything but human children. These are human beings. Thank you, Ms. Page. Would you please wrap up? Okay. If you cannot um, relate to a fetus because it seems to be a primitive life form, um, perhaps you could relate to something else that has a primitive form, like a worm. And I can tell you really quickly that I have seen a worm attacked by fire ants writhing in pain and agony. And if that if I can clearly Audience, see please, that that worm is experiencing pain, then that, then how much more a human life form, a developing human with mm -hmm. hands and feet. Okay. I, I'm going to ask you to stop because uh, I understand. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. The chair calls John Figo, uh, representing the Texas Right to Life. Uh, and uh, Mr. Figo is for the bill. Madam Chair, <clears throat> committee members, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this, and thank you for your stand up tonight. We appreciate your the name, opportunity. Please. My name is John Stego. Uh, I serve as legislative director of Texas Right to Life, a pro life organization that seeks to protect life from fertilization until natural death. I'm here in support of HB 60. Uh, HB 60 contains multiple pro life provisions. However, the majority of the criticism uh, that we've heard in the Senate and on this side has to do with the uh, Texas Preborn Pain section, and so I want to address that section specifically. Um, 
there were questions about studies, about the science, um, and so uh, what is being handed out to you is a 19-page document with 32 citations of peer-reviewed articles um, and medical textbook quotations that has uh, physiological, behavioral, and chemical evidence that it is reasonable to believe that by 20 weeks post-fertilization, unborn children do feel pain. So we had a larger list in the first hearing on a similar topic in the regular session. It was a, about a 40-page document. Representatives uh, asked us to put that down to just the peer-reviewed studies, and that's what you're looking at before you. It's Texas Right to Life's position that as our scientific knowledge about unborn children advances, so does our moral responsibility to protect that unborn life. It advances, it increases, and we have an increased moral responsibility this, more, or this evening of protecting that preborn life. Uh, the substantial medical evidence that I handed out uh, forces us to establish a state interest in that life. And then an application of that state interest would be to prohibit abortions on those unborn children where there's medical consensus that they feel pain at 20 weeks. I do want to address one other thing, a, a journal of uh, the actually JAMA article from 2005. Um, and we've talked about this a lot and I wanted to just bring that up that um, there are multiple problems and I've outlined them uh, in uh, a paper that I handed you of the three main, or sorry, the four main problems with the JAMA article. It was in 05, and you'll see in the handout that we gave, we're depending upon a lot of studies that were published, peer-reviewed studies that were published after 2005. I would encourage you to review those. But also, I want to mention the conflict of interest of the authors. The lead author of the article was Susan Lee, who uh, was previously employed uh, as a lawyer at NARAL and uh, the pro-abortion political activist, uh, activist organization. And uh, also one of Lee's four co-authors was Eleanor Dre, and uh, she was the director of the largest abortion clinic in San Francisco. So if we're really focusing on the facts, really focusing on objectivity, really looking at the science, um, the conflict of interest that these two authors would have in putting together that survey, it wasn't a, it wasn't a study, it wasn't a peer-reviewed study, it was a survey in JAMA. Um, I think that there's a conflict of interest there that should make us look at the real evidence um, of the peer-reviewed studies and uh, not just that survey that's been discredited. Thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, members, any questions? Thank you so Thank you, much. Um, we called Ms. Saylors earlier. I believe she's in now, Christy Saylors, uh, representing herself, and she is for the, for the bill. Hi, my name is Christy Saylors, and I am for the proposed fetal pain laws. Um, I speak in honor of my son, Jeremy Lynn Saylors, who passed away in October of 1993. In 1980, when I was 16 years old, I had an abortion. It affected me negatively in every possible way, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Emotionally, I felt such pain and despair that I had allowed my own child to be killed that I was filled with self-loathing and depression. Physically, I found that years later, when I was married and ready to have children with my husband, I would have much difficulty conceiving and bearing a child. Spiritually, I was bereft for many years and simply tried not to think about that part of my life. In 1993, after seven years of infertility treatments and one miscarriage, I became pregnant with my precious son, Jeremy. At 18 weeks, my doctor took measurements of Jeremy's bones and found that he was not growing at the expected rate. I was then sent to specialists who were not able to determine the cause of Jeremy's problems, but advised having an abortion anyway. My husband and I both knew that this was not the path for us and refused. We would let nature take its course and fervently prayed along with many friends and family for a miracle. In October, at seven months of gestational age, my son Jeremy's heart stopped beating. I was induced into labor the next day and my husband and I spent precious hours with our son holding and touching and loving on our sweet little boy. Several days later, we had a beautiful graveside service for him and felt much peace in the fact that we had not chosen to end his life prematurely and that he died peacefully and warmly in my womb, not ripped out violently. This choice did not work out for, for us in the traditional way that most people think of as a positive outcome, but for us it was. 
Two years later, we adopted our oldest son, Jesse. Three and a half years after that, twin boy and girl, Cal and Carrie. And 15 months after that, I brought our son, Jamie, into this world. For me, medical science cannot be the determining factor in aborting a child. In fact, my oldest son has a best friend whose mother was told to abort him. She refused, and he has his medical issues, but nothing overwhelming, and now he is a happy 17-year-old who will graduate next year. I would never put any woman through an abortion knowing the agony and despair that I felt afterwards. Women are created to love and nurture. It is in our DNA, and experiencing abortion goes against every fiber of our being. Women deserve better. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony, Ms. Sailors. Uh, members, any questions? Thank you. The chair calls. Uh, Carol Ann Preston. Uh, Ms. Preston. Uh, we're, we're trying to find you in the computer here. Hold yeah. on. Okay, I need to know who she's testifying for. It's not up yet here. Okay. Uh, Carol Ann Preston, who is representing herself, and she is for this bill. Yes, I am. Thank you, um, Madam Chairman and the committee, for hearing my testimony. My name is Carol Ann Preston. I am testifying for myself in support of both of these bills. No. No. Right, right now... Right now, uh, the chairman has laid out only one, and that's okay, 60. Uh, 60. Okay, I support uh, House Bill 60. In 1986, after um, briefly divorced and uh, an expected death of my best friend, I found myself pregnant. I was a mother of two young children at the age of 29. I was told that I would lose my job and that I would lose custody of both of my young children. I never told my best friend that I was pregnant because she died. I called my doctor and had my pregnancy confirmed and was given a card to an abortionist in Dallas. I went, or I called, made the appointment, asked specific questions regarding what I needed to do uh, to prepare time, anything else, and um, that I would do for my children. I was told that I did not need to take off more than the day of the procedure from work and that I would be able to return to work uh, the following day and that it would be no more than a toothache or having a tooth pulled. And when I was 10 or 12 years old, 10 to 12 years old, I had four teeth pulled at the same time, and I rode my bicycle home until my mom came home with popsicles. So that was my reference was it was no, no going to be no more than having a tooth pulled. I went to the abortion clinic. I, I did ask if I needed care after, after I got home. I was told I did not. I only needed someone to drive me. And the person that drove me was told to come back and pick me up within an hour to an hour and a half. When after my insurance paid and my former neighbor and ob Jen referred me to this doctor, I had a sense of trust that I was going to a safe place. I went in. I changed my mind. I was not allowed to leave. The doctor came in. The only forms that were ever filled out was my name and my insurance information. There was no medical information given, none asked. No medications were asked. No allergies were asked. There was nothing. And as a licensed massage therapist, I'm required to do more than that for the clients that I have seen. Um, the doctor did come in and um, never spoke to me, was completely closed. Never heard the word, never heard the voice. I was there and did not leave until sundown. I was the first patient there, and I was the last to leave. Please. I was the last to leave. I was dressed, dragged, and dumped in the car that was waiting for me because I was hemorrhaging and was not able to stay conscious enough to sit up and get dressed myself. And I stayed home in bed, trying not to fall asleep because I was afraid that if I did, I would hemorrhage to death, and my children would come home and find me dead. I was no longer able 
able to have any more children or to conceive. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Preston, for your testimony. Members, any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, Mary Lynn Gersten Schiger, Schlager, uh, with the Texas Eagle Forum, testifying for the bill. Let's go on to the next one. I don't want to wait. 